Hello to all my beautiful nerds and welcome back from traveling the vast nerd universe. I am back with another video. I know it's been a long time, but my tripod ended up falling apart. So I had to scramble and get some new ones. And I found some selfie sticks that double as a nice little, uh, nice little tripod. And I'm using one of them. So yay, I am back with with a new one and this time it's a nice little tag video and it's all thanks to the one and only Kimberly Clark this is known as the as the no brand um no brand tag that she has come up with and as you know, she's known for anti-consumerism and that we can't always buy everything that we see, especially on YouTube, which I do agree because one, luxury products can are always expensive and we can't always afford them unless if it's a sale. Yes, sales are nice, but they don't always take such a big discount. I mean, I understand Sephora with their um, VIB sales. Also, Ulta does 21 Days of Beauty. That is a pretty good sale right there. But, and of course, B, sometimes some of the products that someone recommends uh, aren't always the best, unless if we discover them ourselves. Yes, we do have the YouTube Made Me Buy It uh, type of videos and also that can be a huge cost if we're getting those really big luxury items. I do admit I do buy some of the recommended higher end products in, products and some of the drugstore stuff but sometimes I do wait for those to go on sale or sometimes if they're new. I know next month is going to be a new release for something so I'll be looking out for that um what else another point to consider <laughs> about that also even though some products work for some people but not all products work for others so that's one great thing to consider. Heck, I'm also being a little bit more careful on what I buy when it comes to my purchases. <laughs> if it's pretty good on the rating scale, then great. If it's not, it's not. And plus, I do watch reviews to, give, to say, hey, this product is really good. But anyways, to the point of this video, this tag is a way of not always mentioning everything that you use. It's just focusing on the technique that you do. And since I'm a visually impaired makeup lover, I do have a different technique from a lot of the sighted people. I can't always see myself in the mirror, so I have to rely on the sense of touch. So I'm going to pretty much explain a little bit more of how I do it without mentioning the brands I'm using. So the rules of this tag, you can't mention any of the brands nor show any of the logos for that brand on that product. So that means you can't really go all certain YouTuber, which I remember, and be like, this is from this brand and keep on going with all the different products from said same brand. So that's one big rule. If you're here and watching this video and want to do this tag, I do tag you. And also anybody else who might be able to challenge themselves with this. And this is a nice little challenge. So let's get started. So I always start with brows. And with my current brow routine, I usually start with a brow gel, a clear one, then a brow pomade, and then a 
brow pencil to set it all. I know some people would probably say, why not do the other way around with the pomade and um, brow pencil, but most of the time, I never thought about using brow pencils until now to help set some of it, since sometimes over plucking can be a thing. Oh, I did forget to mention before um, doing any of my makeup, I do moisturize. I do have dry and sensitive skin, which can be an issue, and I do moisturize before I start putting on makeup to help my skin not be so sensitive throughout putting on my makeup. I do recommend going with the skin type you have and just buy the... Uh, by the moisturizer is based on that. A lot of different drugstore brands do have uh, a lot of moisturizers because you don't always want to spend so much on higher end or luxury skincare like most people do. And I do love my drugs. <laughs> I'm starting to like the drugstore a little bit more for my skincare. Heck, I even use some skincare products from one really good brand that I've been getting in one of my subscription bags or boxes and it's been working out for me along the way another great thing without spending so much on skincare you can also try it out from some stores and see if you can find a dupe for that skincare product and see how it goes from there and also, like I said before, subscription boxes do give you pretty good skincare items. If you can't use it, just give it away to a person or trade it off because there are pages that let you do that. I haven't done any trading at all because I've been having really good uh, products come in my boxes, even though I do admit I'm giving away some false lashes because I don't wear falsies. I'll get to that when I get to mascara. I'm trying to find one of my brow brushes because I usually use an angled type brush to do my brows. If I could find that brush. Do I know I have one because I know I didn't put in my brushes I need to clean jars. That's one of my eye br brushes. Eye brush. I think I use that for concealer. And another, well, I could mention brushes. You don't have to, uh, yeah. you don't have to spend so much on brushes. You can find them anywhere. You could get them in subscriptions. You can also get them cheap as a set from places, uh, different places on the internet. Um, also, some brands do have a lot of discount sales, which is good. And some of them have to deal with uh, different brush bundles. And some subscriptions do have their own little shop where you can buy the uh, brushes that way. I found a, a brow brush. I 
Now my brow, my angled brow brush. So I'm gonna go and do my clear brow gel. Like you could tell, I know I mentioned in my bad and boring post that this is usually the most boring part of the routine. Like most people do say, but for all intents and purposes of a video like this, it does help showing what I do. Next, I'm going in to my brow pomade, which is in my shade, my hair shade, which I have dark brown hair, and this is pretty dark brown. <laughs> Mainly, I go for drugstore brow products, which is, which you don't, like I said with brushes, you don't have to spend that much for brow items. I mean, drugstore is hitting the game. I've been using this brow pomade for a while now, ever since I tried out brow powders. But to me, pomade a little bit easier to use. And next I'm going in with a pencil. Sometimes you get brow pencils in subscriptions. I'm going to brush it through with this spoolie for a moment. Sometimes my brows like to be a little unruly. During work, if if anybody's wondering about that, most of the time I use like a double-ended brow gel and, and clear mascara. Because I don't want to have my brows look so dark, especially when I'm teaching. So I just use more of a clear brow gel and a clear mascara for my lashes. And you have one on one side and one on the other, which makes it easier to use. Instead of being awake at 4.45 in the morning, try to find the mascara you want to use. Unlike me, I use a paratransit, so I have to be ready once they're there. Okay, I'm going to clean off my brush. And now I'm going to go and prime my eyelids. And with eye primer, I mainly prefer the potted eyeliners rather not eyeliners eye primers because to me the ones with the wand they run out too fast over time like for instance one I only I end up running out by week like three after three and a half weeks and I feel like they only have air for most of the vial while here, while you're using the uh, eye primer from the pot, it does let you know how much you have left over time. Sometimes my eye primer is in the pots give me a lot of usage, like three three to four months at most, depending on some, while others it's like two to three months. <laughs> and 
and you can find them pretty easily in drugstore and sometimes luxury brands but most of them I like, kind of go mid-range and the higher end <laughs> but of course I do go on pretty smooth with the finger or if you don't like the idea of a finger you can also use a brush I use a brush on one particular one which I ended up buying again from one from a makeup aisle all right for the eyes for this video I'm kind of going to the basic palette like not too many shades because if I do that I wouldn't have my Braille Sense or my Chromebook with shades I would be using and that's not fair so I'm using a palette where the shades are like already in a row and I'm gonna be using like for instance this one it has six shades in a row and normally with the bigger palettes like I said I just write down the shades that I'm gonna be using from one of the palettes as a planned look and go from there but since for this video since it, it's uh, fairly different from what I do I'm just using a basic palette with all the shades just lined up so first I'm going in with the defining shade let me mainly I keep my eyes closed after I do um, eye primer so I don't have it creasing like crazy oops there goes the palette one thing even though I love having a as it a vanity but most of the time it, I tend to have my palettes on my lap and if you hear clinking with anything that's because I usually put my stuff on top of a tea tray I was living with my parents and doing my makeup on my couch I tend to have the tea tray on my knee but since I have a smock that keeps the shadows from going on my skin if they're really powdery I'm going I'm starting with a green shade on my definer which I go um, top lash line close to my crease I know people had different ways of doing their shadows but most of the time this is how I do mine again not everybody has the same techniques with my right eye I kind of do a little bit differently Next, I am going into my crease shade, which is right next to that deep green. Okay, 
going into my crease area. This is. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. If you heard that beep, it's one of my neighbors. They have one of their motorcycles taken. Sorry. So they have a securities. They have that beep um, to say, don't touch. And there they go. If you don't know, Daytona Beach is huge for motorcycles, but it's NASCAR. And now to finish this look, I'm going into my brow shade. And I'm using a small little brush. go on my brow bone I know some people over in a makeup community type group always get on my case about the shades I use well some of them get on my case about the kinds of shades I use I tend to try to take up their take up some of that advice but not, like I said not everybody's technique is always the same yes I try to go for mid-tone shades but it's hard for me to see the palette so that's why I write down the shades and there's one thing I wish a lot of brands do for their own websites put the shade names please I want to know if I'm reaching for a right kind of shade and I tried contacting one brand about that they they didn't accommodate me pretty well and I'm gonna blend it with a really fluffy brush So I won't have any harsh lines. And I didn't hear back from one brand when I was trying to write them about it. <laughs> okay, now on to pencil. Well, eyeliner pencil. If you're beginning as a blind person going into makeup, I suggest using eyeliner pencils because liquid eyeliner tends to run all over the place. I remembered having black eyeliner all over my face back in the day and someone thought I was doing a Halloween costume with whiskers. I'm like, no. And it was my eyeliner running all over the place. So pencils are easier to control. And also, if you want to still use liquid eyeliner, I suggest getting those uh, 
eyeliner brushes that come in a lot of uh, brush sets because that's what I tend to do when I'm using anything liquidy and sometimes uh, depending on the brand they do offer the brush to go with it I mean I got like a water activated eyeliner with a um with a brush and that was very handy and the good thing is they did do a video on how to use that particular eyeliner <clears throat> yeah you have to leave it out to dry but it's worth it I do like it it's easy to use so next I'm gonna curl my lashes and again you don't have to spend so much on a lash curler you can just pick one up easily from the drugstore and I'm kind of doing the winner of Master Chef does. With her lashes, her lash curler. Because one magazine did an article on blind women and makeup and mentioned how she does her lash curler. Next I'm going to use are my lashes. As said before, I don't use false lashes because I the truth about false lashes they tend to pull off your lashes over time when with all the glue and everything and damages the follicles so it's better off just using mascara so I'm using a random mascara from my makeup toolbox I think I got mascara on my nails. So glad I don't do my face before <clears throat> eyes. Even though, yeah, they do say you could just wait until the mascara dries down. But most of the time I just use baby wipes to help. Yeah, sometimes mascara is a tricky thing to use. Because sometimes my eyes twitch and I sometimes poke my eye. Or sometimes the wand has such spiky bristles you have to be careful with it. But again, <clears throat> don't always need false lashes, just get mascara because yeah that <coughs> mascara <coughs> for every type of lash quality I'd, if I use that kind of word uh, as in lengthening volumizing curl <coughs> curl <coughs> Excuse me. Curl. <clears throat> yeah. As I was trying to say, curling. There we go. We should have brought another bottle of water. <clears throat> and now. 
on to primer. I forgot to bring an, an eye cream for my under eyes because I got eye creams from subscriptions. Hold on. And I started using that as part of the makeup routine. Hold on. Let me see if it's still on my desk. On my computer desk. Find it over at my desk. Not sure if I moved it. My vanity. Sorry about that, guys. Unless if I did, should be. Wait, I found it. No, wait. This is a liquid. Yeah, this is a liquid highlighter. Nope, that's concealer. Still, that's setting spray. That's for it. That's where I had it. I guess I'd look for it later. For now, I am just gonna stick with using my face primer. Yeah, gonna just stick in with face primer for now. Like with a um, moisturizer, just uh, stick with using face primers meant for your skin type. I'm using one that I kind of feel like is more for oily types. And I kind of feel like It kind of reacts with my skin just a little bit on a little weird but said it moisturizes so I've been using it I'll put this on my under eye to help spread Concealer. And besides, I'm already starting to run low a little bit more on this primer, so I'm almost done with it. But again, try using foundation primers that work for your skin rather than against it. And of course, going to use my under eye concealer. Most of the time I use ones in jars because it's a lot easier that way. I did get one with the wand that I always love to use before as nostalgia sake. Oh, I found my eyeliner pencil. Oops, I almost put it with all my brushes.
because I was probably running low on it and I didn't know if the store had any more of the one that I've been using. And was kind of lazy to just order it from from the official website. Oh well. But hey. That's why I had it grocery delivery. Yay. I'm gonna put this on my under eyes. They always say use a, a concealer that is lighter than your skin tone on your under eyes. And I do use light in that one. All right, next is foundation. There are different types of foundations that you could use. You could use them with the wand, you could use them with the pump. The one that I've been using has a wand in it and I am a very I'm pretty light medium with a neutral undertone which I learned from getting a new foundation which I haven't tried out yet but I had heard good reviews on it and it's my first high full-size high-end foundation so hoping that one works out for me but right now, I am just using my favorite drugstore one. I'm gonna spread it all over my face. And of course, we'll be using a sponge. You can get sponges pretty, pretty cheap, like with brushes from different places on the net. I'm using its flat side spread my foundation to and blending it into my skin <laughs> and I'm gonna use the butt side yeah <laughs> butt side uh, the sponge sometimes I like using that for powder. I've been using my translucent setting pressed powder for both my face and under eyes. I, uh, someone gave me a tip to just use translucent powder, powder instead of just using colored, which I did find that was a nice little change for, for myself. instead of just blending two different shades one lighter one darker Ow. so translucent and also it doesn't really irritate my face when I do it that way And now I'm going to powder the rest of my face with this translucent powder. I do have other powders waiting to be used. I'll, 
I did buy one on recommendation from watching a video. The other one, another box. So can't wait to use those two. One good thing about being with a box subscription, you don't always have to go out and buy certain products. It helps you to stock up. <laughs> like on eyeliners, I don't, I rarely buy an eyeliner. If I had to get a shade that I haven't been getting in a box, I would go and get it. <laughs> and sometimes I put pen eyeliners into my work kit. Can't forget my forehead. Mm. <laughs> All right, next, after patterning, I usually do contour, but I mainly focus on around this area rather than doing it all over my on my forehead or any other place like my nose and so on I mostly focus it on the easier parts of my face and I tend to use a lighter bronzer because if I try doing like a super dark one it won't look good with my skin tone I remember getting one that was more of a loose type formula and it did not look good with my skin at all. Yep. So, gonna be. Oh, this is a blush. Okay, where did I. Oh, wait. Underneath my palette. So, I'm gonna use a light bronzer. This is more of a baked one. Yeah, I'm gonna go around here. I kind of go a little bit over where I need to put it. I do like a backward C motion on my face. And next, I am going in for my blush. <clears throat> Blushes come in very different shades, and usually the best kind of blush for me would be more of a rosy or a pinky blush. I do admit I sometimes go do wear a mauvey berry type one, but today for this look, I'm going with a much pinkier one. And if I can find my blush brush. There we go. And I don't do apples on the apples in my cheeks because over time the apples of your cheeks will sag. And most of the time, I just do it on my cheekbones. And sometimes I do something that some some people have suggested, where I put two fingers near my nose and go that way.
gonna do the same thing here. Just focusing on more of my cheekbone. Because here's the thing, if you watch anime at all like I do, we blush on our cheekbones, not the apples. Like if you saw on Sailor Moon, you saw uh, her always blushing and it's always on the cheek, like near the nose and cheek bone. <clears throat> And finally, my last part of my routine is highlighter. I do mix it up with different colors. Like I even have a blue one. But with this one, I'm going to use more of a golden highlight. Try and finish up one I have forever. <laughs> That's one thing about buying makeup. There are times when you forget about some things in your collection and you're trying to use up some of it. Okay, am I? Oh my god, I think I'm hitting pan in one part of the highlighter. Yay! Yeah, even though it's true, it's impossible to pan a blush or a highlight or even a bronzer. I need to redo the packaging on these because on my bronzer from this one brand, it came off and I had to tape it on and try to use it that way and next I'm gonna blend it with a with this brush if if you have those kind of compacts that come with brushes like these save them and just use them to blend your face products together like I do because it kind of flushes with the skin And now on to setting spray. I use a setting spray that helps keep my skin moisturized. I used to use matte ones, but it kind of made my face itch after an entire day of wearing makeup. Oh, I didn't almost forgot lips. Hmm. Did you bring up any lip products from that bag? That's my Oh, that's my other setting spray. I have one in back up. Hold on. Let me see if I... Did I... Oh. Yep. Oh, found them. Found my look products. I do use a lot of different lip products, but today I am using more of a lip gloss. So, going with the lip balm. <laughs> it's best to use a lip balm because it helps keep your lips moisturized because a lot of these lip products, especially liquid lipsticks, make your lips dry and now I'm going to use a lip liner 
to help keep my lip, lip product from feathering. I don't do the top lip because it tends to tickle. And now finally the lip gloss. And, well, I gotta use a tissue real quick to dab any excess. It's a good way of doing it. Even some brands get that as a tip. And that completes the look. Okay, guys, that completes it. This one is an interesting little take on doing makeup looks, and I'm glad that Kimberly, Kimberly Clark did this tag because it, it kind of helps us talk about the technique over the product because I do mention the products, and I know I'll be doing that with my next look, which I'm going to be adding a new guys in anime or cartoons wearing makeup and I'm doing it on Shoto Todoroki from My Hero Academia. I was kind of inspired, inspired from the shirt that I got from Hot Topic where it's a long sleeve and it mentions fire and ice. This is going to be a fun little look and it's going to be challenging too because I'm doing both a fire side and an ice side to go with uh, each side of his body because well one side uses fire the other one uses ice so yeah uh, that's gonna be fun to do so stay tuned for that video I'm probably gonna do it next Sunday or the Sunday after that so make sure you follow us on Twitter at nerdy chic that's ner at sign nerdy then s h i q u e for the announcement so hoping you guys don't miss that video and also make sure you subscribe like if you like this video and want to see more tags just comment down below and also make sure you subscribe to our blog over on WordPress which is nerdychic. I mean nerdychicuniverse.wordpress.com which is where I post a lot of my unboxings from subscriptions and talk about other topics such as who I want to interview. Also, um, tech reviews, like for instance, a tap wearable keyboard, which I need to buy a new one. I ended up losing mine somehow. So hoping whenever I get the new one, I'll keep on learning. So, until then, <clears throat> un well, ah, crap. Until then, stay beautiful in the vast nerd universe. <laughs>